Alright guys, so here we're going to work the worksheet um, entitled Peacock. Alright, so get out that worksheet entitled Peacock. And we're going to start with number one. Which of the fo following points lies in quadrant three? Well first off, let's think about how the quadrants are divided. Okay? So, if you have your, um, your uh, XY plane, Right? This is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. This, why am I drawing Roman numerals? I should probably just draw regular numbers. This is quadrant two. This is quadrant three. This is quadrant four. Okay? Now, we can plot each of these pretty simply, but I want y'all to notice something else. In this quadrant, the x and y values, x is positive and y is positive, right? So it's always going to be a positive comma positive. Here, your x's are negative, right, because you're going to go into the left. Your y's are positive because you're going up. So negative positive. Three, negative x going to the left, negative y going down, negative negative. Four, positive x, negative y. So positive x, negative y. Now let's look here. We're looking for quadrant three. Oh, that's why I was doing Roman numerals, because it lists as a Roman numeral, right? This is quadrant three. So quadrant one is like that. Quadrant two is like this. Quadrant three is like this. Quadrant four is like that, okay? And you can put lines. It's like the correct way to do Roman numerals. I don't know what they do. All right, but one, two, three, and four, just in case you need to know that, okay? Quadrant three, we got negative, negative. Positive, 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 negative, negative, positive, negative, negative. That's the only possible answer choice, D, negative 2, negative 2. Now, I've also graphed this for you. So, uh, you know, you should go ahead and get some extra pa practice and make sure you can plot all four of those points. And if you want, go ahead and pause this video and, uh, you know, make sure that you understand exactly where those are plotted. Notice the one half. You know, it's not quite at the one, the three, four, especially the fractions. Make sure you understand those fractions. Make sure you can graph those, no problem. All right. So that's our number one. Now let's take a look at number two. A rectangle is drawn on a coordinate plane with a vertex in each of the four quadrants. Three of the vertices have the coordinates 3, 2, negative 2, negative 4. 3, negative 4. What are the coordinates of the fourth vertex? Okay, so again, right now, plot those points. Make sure you can do it. Don't wait for me to do it because you know I'm about to do it in two seconds. So pause the video and do it, okay? But now let me show you. So you got these points. You got to remember 3, 2, which is there. Negative 2, negative 4, which is there. Uh, 3, negative 4, which is there. Okay. So now you see that you have the three points. Obviously, the fourth point of the rectangle is going to be at that point right there. Okay. And that barely works. At the uh, negative 2, 2. Right? Because that obviously would form, and that doesn't work. Right? But that would form a rectangle. Okay? If you went through, you're going to go right like that, and that's going to form your rectangle. So therefore your answer is this point, which is negative 2, 2. It's going to be your answer, which is answer choice G. Alright? For the number 2. Okay, let's look at number 3. A circle with a radius of 3 units is shown below. Uh-oh. Go up. We'll zoom out a little bit. That was too much, huh? Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, wrong way. Alright. So, circle with a radius of 3 is shown below. Now, generally, it's going to be better because it's going to show some more points. But you know what I would do just to make this easy? Let's just draw lines right through the middle, which is going to be about right there and about right there. So this is the um, point. You can approximate it. This is about 1, negative 2, okay, which is uh, answer choice B, right? It's just like a scope on a gun right there. 1, negative 2. Now, most of these don't even make sense. Negative 1.52. Negative 1.52 is up there. That's obviously not the circle, not the center. Negative 2, 1. Um, negative 2, 1 is there. That's obviously not it. 2, negative 2.5. 2, negative 2.5. Now that is at least in the circle, 
But obviously that's not the center of the circle, okay? So even though you don't have the lines, um, you can kind of make an educated uh, guess and figure out the correct answer on that number three. All right, so let's move on to the final one, number four. All right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole four. All right, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's one of the longer problems. So I'm just going to see here and we're just going to talk about it. Polygon is reflected over the line through negative one, four, and negative one, negative four. Now to figure out how to reflect that line, that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to wait till it focuses. Uh-oh. Focus for me. Looks like it doesn't want to focus for you. I'm going to have to hit the autofocus one more time. Let's change the lighting. Oh, doesn't look like we're going to get any help with that. Come on, focus. 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 All right. There we go. You, you just needed a little chant. That's all you got to do. Just give a little chant, and it will focus. Just little words of encouragement. All right. So we're reflected over the line through negative 1, 4, and negative 1, negative 4. So you might look at that, and it seems kind of confusing. But it's not going to be too hard to draw a line through those points. Just so make sure you can grasp them. Negative 1, 4. Negative 1, right, is about halfway. I know, again, there isn't clear marks. But negative 1, 4 is here. Bam. Next point is negative 1 and negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4 is here. So what are we reflecting across? We're reflecting across this line. That's the line that goes through negative 1, 4, and negative 1, negative 4. Well, pretty simple to reflect across this line, right? Just like a mirror. Bam! So all you gotta do is just draw it the same way. Just like that. That's gonna be the reflection of that across that line. Okay? So let's look at our answer choices. Which of those look like that right there? Alright, and we move it up perfectly straight. We're gonna notice that that is indeed... Uh-oh, you know what? No, that's right. So be careful with the, um, this is going to be kind of confusing because of the way, the way I drew that reflection line. Um, so, you're right, now I'm going to have to realign this. Now it's going to not be the same size. So what you're going to notice is the correct answer choice should be F, guys. That's the one, because when I reflected it, oh man, this, this is causing us some trouble, huh? When I reflected it, remember that, uh, the X. So rewind it. Rewind the video right now. I'm not even going to mess with this anymore. The answer choice is F. Rewind the video and you'll notice that here is where the uh, X and Y, this is where the Y axis was at. And this is where the X axis was at. Alright. So you can see that this is exactly like the Y axis, the X axis. So rewind the video and you'll see. Don't get confused by this line. This was the line of reflection not the y-axis, okay? So I hope that didn't confuse you, and your correct answer is thus going to be F.